G'day guys, it's Jar here and welcome back to Dream Daddy. We're about to go on our date with Hugo the teacher or Hugo Mr. Vega. And then in the next episode we will finally choose who will get our second date. This is like the bachelor. I'm going on a date with Hugo. Um apparently he's turned on some muscles. So and what do you never leave the home without my glasses? Not even wearing your glasses. Okay, let's just message Hugo. Try not to make assumptions about people. That is a good dad tip. Try not to make assumptions of people because you're usually wrong. <laughs> just don't assume things. Drink plenty of water. Drink a full glass of water in the morning to help wake up. That is true, it actually does help you to wake up. Because it gets your system going and your blood going and just it gets your whole body ready for the day. Drink water. Hell yeah. So. In the last episode, we went out with Matt, I believe it was. Is that his name? Yeah, Matt. Um, so now we're going out with Hugo. And then get to Hugo's dad book page and type out a message. Hey Hugo, great seeing you at the barbecue. Want to hang out sometime? I'll wait for a few minutes before my computer dings. Uh-oh. Whoa, hold on, that's a lot. I'm so glad you messaged me. I'm definitely wanting to hang out, but I have to have a favor to ask. Our class is going to a field trip to the aquarium today, and one of our chaperones called in sick. Is there any possible way you can come and by replacing them? Oh no. I think about it for a moment, man. A lot of screaming kids that I'd be accountable for, and they're in middle school, are we the worst age? I can understand if you don't want to or can't make it, but I'm going to be here with. But I'm going to be honest with you here, it's the middle school class. I need as much help as I can get. Amanda, Amanda silently chugs into the kitchen, pours herself a bowl of cereal. Morning, Amanda. Morning, Pops. Ugh. Hey, how was middle school for you? Bad. But no one likes middle school. It's three years of bad acne, Ugh. crying, and being generally terrible. Everyone sucks. No self-aware, it's just a bunch of hormonal teachers locked in a gross old building for 40 plus hours a week, doing long division and starting fights over... I don't know, pizza day? Top 40 pops? Middle schools mm. should be avoided at all costs. What's your middle school experience like? Well, we don't really have middle school in Australia. Well, it's not as popular. So I think middle schooler is what, four, five, six now? Because year seven is now part of high school for us. So how was year four, five, and six? I honestly thought it was fine, to be honest. There was nothing really out of the ordinary for me. I had friends who... No. No, they were all wronged in some way, shape, or form. They were terrible to me. No. And wait. I was terrible then too. It's all rushing back to me. Middle school was awful. Yeah. I have repressed it for so long. No. Middle school. It was actually fine. Dad, did we just have a breakthrough? Huh. I think we did. Grab the ice cream, grab the couch, we're going through our therapy session again, hon. See, middle schools are reprehensible. Wait, why are you asking me about middle school? Oh, Mr. Vega requested me... Request? That sounds weird. Requested my help to chaperone the middle school class to the aquarium. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to know what I was in for. You get to go to the aquarium? Are you kidding me? The last food trip I got to go was to the clam chowder factory. They didn't even give us clam chowder. They gave us square pizza at clam chowder factory. Oh, is that why you won't eat clam chowder anymore? Hey, you're lucky. The last school trip I went on was to a literal dump. Not even kidding. It was to an actual dump with my school to show us how much rubbish we produce. This was in year seven. Do you think a bunch of year seven kids are going to care? No. It was kind of cool though because there was some things we could do. But mainly was us sitting on a bus looking at piles and piles of trash. Yeah. No, it's because Bobby Wellington threw up in one of the vats of clam chowder and I'm the only one who saw it happen. It haunts me. Right, let's leave that story firmly in the past. Anyway, 
You should just do it. Mr. Vegas sounds like he could really use the help. Plus, you get to hang out with the cool fish. Amanda, I'm... I get a kind of weird... I get kind of weird around, about aquariums. The ocean makes me nervous. What? Are you worried that a whale's gonna pop out and touch the tank and swallow you whole? Can you not put that fear into my heart? No, it's in my head. Well, do they have penguins there? Right. Yes, they have penguins there. Then it's settled. Penguins outweigh fear of the ocean. I mean, that's pretty good. I sit back down at the computer and let Hugo know that I'm available. He tells me to meet him at the aquarium and gives me a dress. I grab my keys and kiss Amanda on the forehead before I head out. I arrive at the aquarium to find the school bus has beat me there. Preteens hutter around their teacher in small groups, yelling at each other and grieving off. Every teacher looks like they're at their wits' end. Hugo jogs up to me, looking frazzled. Oh, I can't remember his voice. I'm so glad you're here. Hmm. Hugo! It's been a debacle all morning. We're short-handed and most of the kids would stop screaming. I'm sure you know is the case with all middle schoolers. I live through Amanda's... I lived through at Amanda at 12. I'm all too familiar. Great. Well, it's you and me chaperoning a group of 10 kids. They're over here. Hugo walks me over to a gaggle of preteens who are all sitting on the ground playing on their phones. They're not kicking each other like some other groups, so we're off to a good start. Can you guys put your phones away? All the kids look up for a moment to stare at Hugo, then go back to texting. Hmm. At least they're quiet. Too quiet. These guys are up to something. I can feel it. There's no way. They're too busy thinking about not getting food stuck in their braces to pull mm -hmm. any stunts. It's middle school after all. We'll see. Ah. Oh. The classes start filling into the aquarium and Hugo hands out a massive staple pack of papers to each kid. I remember when we did this. We did something like this in year six. We went to the Adelaide Zoo and we got given this pack and we had to like find all these different things. And it was so cool. I loved it. Because we got to like run around I think it was, no, it was Botanical Gardens we ran around, and we had like all these different areas where like notes or like people would be saying there and like give us all this information about everything, and it was so cool. We got to write down all these fascinating details. I'm a huge fact nerd, so anything cool facts, I will listen to hours upon end. And it was all cool because it was like fun fact. This was built then, but they actually didn't think about building it till then, or like it's made out of this material, or like. There's this many fish in this particular pond, and it was just like. Ah. They usually do with the end of the field trip. Yes. This will be graded. No, you cannot borrow a pencil. See, we didn't have it graded, we just did it for fun. The kids collectively groan and grab the sheet from Hugo. Hey. What's in the packet? Hey. Honestly, it's just busy work so the teachers can have a moment revised. I think one of the questions asked him to sit quiet for 10 minutes to think about the Great Barrier Reef. <laughs> teacher hat. I like it. Wait, I thought you were an English teacher. Oh. What does the aquarium have to do with books? We just do, you know, on the old man in the sea. Nothing quite like introducing kids to the futile perspective of human spirit by oh. making them pet stingrays. It gives us time to check out the exhibit as well. Come on, they have a phenomenal section of tropical fish. While well, the kids sit on the floor and pretend to do their assignment while they text, Hugo and I wander over to a large tank filled with brightly coloured fish. Hugo points to the brown and white fish with long spines. That right there is a lionfish. Do you know that their stomachs can expand up to 30 times in size? What? Really? I didn't know that. That's actually really cool. See, stuff like this I love. I love the brain on facts. Whoa. Their spines are venomous too. Nature is hardcore. <laughs> That's not a response you give. You don't just say nature's hardcore. They're not a rock band. Can you imagine heavy and um, he heavy metal rock band, heavy metal band named Nature. Nature. <laughs> it would be so bad. <laughs> you think that's bad? Take a look at this one over here. You got put into a smiling, grumpy-looking oh. fish hanging out near the bottom of the tank. That is me when I get home from work. <laughs> just grumpy and just wanting to sit on the floor and do nothing. That's a stonefish. The most venomous fish in the world. Again, me, when I get home from work and I haven't eaten. I'm just like... <laughs> <laughs> and they just like, keep it here? Oh. They're relatively harmless so long as you don't step on them. Hmm? What happens if you step on them? Tissue necrosis. 
Damn, dude. Hey. Cool. Nature's wild. Man, Hugo seems to know a lot about fish. I feel like I need to impress him. Hmm. Hey, see that fish over there? That one? Yeah, that's the... Uh, American Longfin? I've never heard of any of these. Blue nose wiggle fish? Oh. <laughs> American lawn thing, yeah. Did you know that? Uh, paranormal fish trivia, political fish trivia. Uh, political? This fish only the What is happening? <laughs> I didn't know it was so progressive. <laughs> Did you know that the fish that puts liquid <laughs> liquids of <are> marijuana <laughs> and so does America now, which is not a good thing. <laughs> I didn't know it was so progressive. Time mm -hmm. to change it, man. <laughs> wait, wait, are you serious? <laughs> Absolutely not. Oh. I'm playing it for the gags here. <laughs> good one. <laughs> oh my god. Why is that a thing in this game? <laughs> oh my god. That was- oh my god, Game Grumps. Oh, I love you guys so much. <laughs> we led the kids to another room. Sharks, sea turtles, eels, and other marine life swimming around in massive floor descending aquariums. The kids begin to try to take selfies with a shark. He leaves my side to separate two kids who are starting to fight over a Capri Sun. What is that? What's a Capri Sun? I'm assuming it's an ice cream or a drink. I walk around the room reading the tiny little blurbs about different fish swimming inside the enclosure. After a while, I look around to see Hugh again. He's gazing up at the aquarium in childlike wonder. Honestly, me. The ripples in the water cast blue, moving shadows across his face. For someone surrounded by angry hormone preteens, he looks completely peaceful. Okay, fun fact, guys, is that when it comes to me, staring at an aquarium or something where there's just water will calm me the hell down. I don't know what it is, but seeing water move just puts me in a trance and it makes me so calm and so relaxed and feel so at peace. So like I could literally stare at a bottle of water and just turn it slowly and that will calm me down. Watching the ocean, watching a wave, watching a pool even as it ripples when the when a leaf falls and hits it. Like things like that just put me in an absolute trance of calmness and it's amazing. I love it. He looks really cute in this light. I hope he doesn't notice me staring. Oh. Wow. Oh, we'll have to join him. Beautiful, isn't it? I'd rather stare at you. No, we can learn a great deal from Mother Ocean. Oh, there's two sharks. Oh, uh, we can learn a great deal from Mother Ocean. Great many mysteries lie in the ocean. It truly is fascinating to be able to observe in and search these. Yes, that's a very astute point, Jay. We stand together for a moment, admiring the wonders of marine life. Ooh. We eventually make our way to the touch tank room, which seems to be the only thing that kids are actually interested in. The tank is filled with a variety of horseshoe crabs, sea urchins, stingrays, and small fish. I really want to do that. Like, touch as, um, starfish, or like, an urchin, a sea urchin, or like, sea rays and stuff like that. I just want to, like, that'd be really cool. Have you, like, your fingers, like, go over the like starfish because I assume they're quite bumpy and like having the feel and stuff and just kind of touching a stingray would be so cool. Going to the aquarium would be fun. I'm such a nerd but I want to go to the aquarium. I stand around the edge of the tank and make our way a wary distance from the sea life. Who knows what kind of nefarious plans those horseshoe crabs have for my well moisturized hands. Hugo rolls his sleeve and sticks his hand in the water. Don't you want to pet some rays, Jay? Oh, I think I'm good. I don't really... I think I should just stay over here and admire them from a respectable distance. Come on. It'll be fun and... informational. Don't make fun of me, but... I'm scared to touch them. I get weird when there's no glass separating us. I don't know what any of those things are, but I get the feeling that will probably bite me in my delicious hand if given the chance. Nothing in this tank can hurt you. The stingrays have their bars removed and the horseshoe crabs can only eat little clam. 
and the animals are perfectly safe to touch. Against my better judgement, I approach the tank, slowly dipping my hand into the cold water. I touch a stinger and it glides past me. See? See? Not so bad. Feels like a fun, slime me leather. Things get a lot less scary when you learn more about them, right? That is just a life lesson in general. Things are a lot less scary when you learn about stuff, especially humans. Learning about humans and how they interact and how they work and... Personally, I like to people watch and stuff like that because I like to know how different people work and clock and when you say something to them, I like to see how they react and their body movements and stuff like that. So, when you learn about people and anything in general, it does become a lot less scary. I dive my hand back into the clutch tank with my renowned Vyuga for ocean life. I pick up some urchins and fill up the hardcore capaz of the horseshoe. Horse crab. Horseshoe crab. My hands brush against Hugo's as we reach for the same. In Naimo, I pull away blushing. Hugo smiles at me. Hey, you're supposed to be touching the fish. Sorry, I just got a little carried away and some... Wait. That girl over there looks suspicious. Oh. Why is that? Are backpacks usually wet? Hold on. Susan! Susan, get back here! Hugo runs after middle school and catches her before she can make it to the exit. Wanna tell me what's in the bag? Um, textbooks? Wanna tell me what's really in the bag? Susan won't budge. I walk over to Hugo and the girl. I think he might need a bag cop. Look, kid. We don't have any time games here. That's an easy 5 to 10 in the clink. Yeah. I have. I had a bug go down for that once. He came out of change man and said he missed the bars. You're not a teacher, you can't tell me what to do. Yes, well, I am. Can you please put down your bag? Next time, we won't see, please. Susan glares at Hugo for a moment before dropping her book bag on the floor. It lands with a wet slap. We stare at it for yes. a moment before it starts to move. Hugo leaves down and unzips the backpack. A horseshoe crab frantically scudders out across the floor. An employee swoops in, scoops it up, and places it back in the tank. She gives us a disapproving look. Jesus, Susan, what was your plan? I was trying to free him. To where? Outside? Where he was going to die? Susan, go back to your group. We'll discuss this later. Yeah, and here's where we can see him. Susan walks off, leaving me alone with Hugo. Oh. He gives me a pat on the shoulder. Middle schoolers have sticky hands. I doubt that's the first time that that's happened here. All the last. In the next room, we see a variety of smaller tanks, sea urchins, tiny fish, and a rainbow of beautiful underwater oh. plants life surrounds us. Oh, that'd be beautiful. Look over here. Hugo points... Some seahorses gathering at the bottom of the tank. One of them is in the middle of giving birth. That's actually the male seahorse. Sort of takes fatherhood to a new level, doesn't it? Hey kids, come check this out. There's a male seahorse giving birth. I know murmur from students. Oh. They just jump back on their phones. What do you mean? That'd be so cool to see a male seahorse give birth. Fun fact, male seahorses can even give birth and then get pregnant in the same day. What? Really? Man, we thought we had it hard. I actually didn't know that. Oh, I like Hugo. He's full of facts and knowledge. Oh, this is getting hard. I wonder if they have a deal with their kids. Or could teenagers use too, however many thousands of them. You seem to know a lot about marine life, Hugo. It's not really my specialty, but I do make point to learn as much as possible whenever I can. I think that learning shouldn't end when you leave school. We should challenge ourselves to find out more about the things we don't understand every day of our lives. Because if you stop learning, I don't think you'll ever be able to grow or change as a person. I 100% agree with that. Learn about things you don't know about and even learn more about the things you do know. Because the things you do know, there's always more to learn about. Now, I love YouTube and I love doing what I do, but I'm always learning constantly every single day that I do it or every single time I do it. I'm always learning. Just as much as I'm learning every single day, whether it's at school or at home or just in my own personal life. I'm learning more and more things every single day. And it's amazing and I love it. Good point. But I still don't trust the ocean. We'll get there. We finally make our way over to the favorite part of the tour. The Arctic exhibit. Hey. Do we get to see the penguins? Yeah. Yes. We get to see the penguins. Yay. Hell yes. 
<gasps> Penguins! A group of kids ran around the exhibit. They won't stop tapping on the glass with puffin exposure, trying to get their attention. For at least a few moments, teachers, chaperones, and students alike seem to be having a great time. Whoa. What was I so worried about? This isn't too bad. You guys only grabbed my arm. Oh my god, there's a student in the penguin enclosure. Wait, just kidding, it's very bad. How did this. Is, how? Is it one of our house? Mm. Most certainly is. Molly Henderson, Susan's friend. I look over to the penguin and see a determined looking kid crouching behind a rock. She's hiding just out of sight from one of the employees. Over the other side of the enclosure, I see the door to the exhibit ajar. Was it unlocked this whole time? We gotta stop her before the staff sees her and bans our school for life. Hugo looks around. I'll create a distraction. Hugo runs towards the public exhibit and addresses the entire room. Everybody, everybody, everybody. I have an announcement. The whole room turns towards Hugo. Um, here's a few facts I bet you didn't know about penguins. Everyone just stares at Hugo, confused. Well, this is my shot. I run to the enclosure and am greeted by a cold blast of air. Psst. Hey. The girl whips her around to look at me. Her nose is pink from the cold. You can't be in here. Neither can you. I try to walk over to the girl, but the ground is so icy I end up slipping. I catch myself before I hit the ground, but the girl still laughs at me. Contrast to poppy blue, penguins are birds. Birds are usually known to fly, but penguins cannot. So I can understand some confusion when we are discussing the birdness of penguins. The crowd is still somehow in wrath. Kid, what are you doing? I'm letting the penguins go. They deserve freedom. Where are they going to go? They're going to go live in my closet. Look, I just don't even have time to argue about this. we got to get out of here before your stupid brain does something even more stupid. How do you... <sighs> Penguins like cold. Unless you live in the Antarctic, don't try this at home. Uh... Not until I save a penguin. I don't know in fact about penguins only live in cold climates. Uh, with some exceptions, so they don't all live in cold climates if you're splitting hairs here. Did I mention that they don't fly? The crowd is starting to lose interest. I'm running out of time. Um, bribe her. I will give you 20 euros right now if you leave with me. Molly thinks for a second. Okay. Well, give it to me right now. I reach into my pocket and pull out everything I have, examining each bill. Okay, well, I have $12 and some change. There's also a button here. Is that enough? Pay me that at late. Eight late and we have a deal. We move to share our room before I suddenly realize there's a wave of penguins on their way out of the enclosure. We're going to have to block the birds. But if anything necessary, don't say anything at all. How? What? You? Ew! What? I don't want to be hitting animals. It's abuse. No! No! Go away! No! Stop! No! Bad! Go away! All this animal abuse! <laughs> no, 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 no! A penguin escaped! No, 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 no! Hey, that's. That's not even my doing! <sighs> okay, they're escaping through that, that's not even my fault! Oh, thank God. Bribery works. Oh, thank Lord. Everyone needs to know how to use power tools. That's true, I think. Call someone if you're thinking about them. They probably want to hear from you. Oh. Phew. Glad that's over. Just in time, too. Looks like oh. he was wrapping up his diversion speech. And that's why I think penguins are one of the best animals in the world. A few people in the audience clap out of sense of duty. Everyone stares. Hugo spots us from across the ones over. Molly, what were you doing in there? I was liberating animals, Mr. Dacre. You realize that the penguins can only survive in Arctic temperatures, right? You would have a dead penguin on your hands. Well, um, it was a thought that counts. No, Molly, it wasn't. Molly turns to me. Whoa. You owe me eight dollars. What? Just pay you later, kid. Money runs off towards Susan, I suppose, ah. so they can compare animal thief notes. Hmm. You're not off the hook, Molly. Jay, did you just bribe a child? You can't play by the rules when there are penguins on the lines. I don't think you know what she's talking about. Um, 
listen, man, we've all done dark things in our lives. I'm not the young, bright-eyed youth I used to be. That person believes in the world when you wouldn't have to bribe children to save a penguin. The me today knows different. I only wish I could go back. Let's just get through the day and get out of here. With the day finally come to a close, the whole field trip is ushered through to the gift shop and we make our way back to the school buses. As we leave the aquarium, the kids load onto the bus. Hugo pulls me aside. Hey, Jay. Thank you so much for helping out today. You're a lifesaver. Mm. It was no problem. It was actually kind of fun. Let me check you out next time I make it up to you. You like chess boards? Or oh, cheese boards? I can't read. There's nothing on earth more exciting than a good cheese board. I'm all about cheese boards. I love cheese boards. I'm all about cheese boards. Great. Well, I gotta go make sure the kids don't steal anything else. See you around. I walk inside and find the house empty. Hmm, I wonder where Panda's at. Before I know it, Amanda pops in through the front door. What you up to tonight? Just doing some homework. How was the aquarium? It was an adventure. Ugh. Some kid tried to steal a penguin. We've all been there. I had to run and grab it for any of the employees saw. You good to go in the penguin explo explosion? Did you steal a penguin for us? Amanda, no penguins were stolen thanks to the value efforts of myself and Mr. Baker. It was nice getting to spend some time with you guys, though. I'm surprised he helps complete a co-op. He's usually yeah. kind of a... Kind of a what? Kind of a stuck in the mud. He's actually pretty cool. I had a good time with him. Alright, too much mm -hmm. adventure for me today. I'm gonna go rest my eyes. You mean take a nap? There's a difference you'll learn when you become a father. <laughs> or a mother. Date complete! Angry about wet look. Recliner. Good cop, fish youth. Hemingway. Looks like Paradise Lost just got found. Hey. Welcome. We did well. Dads. So that was. We've been on dates with each of them now. <sighs> See, he's really funny. But like, Matt's really chill and cool, and then Craig's just. Mm, he's just a dreamy dad. Hmm. It's gonna be hard choosing which dad to go out with. It's gonna be interesting. What I might do. I might do one video where I just go straight up all Craig route and then all, all Matt route and all Hugo route. Maybe we'll do something like that. I don't know. You guys let me know in the comments below. But anyway, that was our date with Hugo. I think it went very well. Quite successful. And I don't really know. He seems like a really fun guy who has a lot of jokes and is just quite funny and really cool but still strong. He's like a cool, but like, he knows when to be funny, but he knows when to be serious at the same time, which is really nice. Anyway, you tell me who I should go on a date with next, either Craig, Matt, or Hugo. Let me know in the comments below. Alright? Anyway. Alright, see you guys in the next video. Sarcasm out, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye. See ya. Oh, now I have to pick who to go out with. Ah, decisions. Hmm. Yes.